from the 50s right. to the night. So. And Fur and Gold now with Brent and Bruce is also a pretty broad mix. Boyfriends can be a fairly broad mix, although it still tends to fall into the electronic end of things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, you know there isn't a lot of the warmth of like new disco and and or or disco. I mean, I say new disco because that's really what is getting played out now. That is could be considered disco. Um, it has a more electronic edge to it, but it tries to m- mimic the warmth of a lot of older disco records mm-hmm. in terms of its arrangements and uh, its bass lines and things like that, and its 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 rhythms and and its um, beats per minute. You know, yeah. tend to be like on the lower end sometimes. Um, whereas right now, the biggest trend in dance music is still, and I don't like this sort of catch-all phrase, but EDM is what is kind of what um, is really big right now and that's all like 128 beats per minute it's all by a handful of it feels like a handful of the same producers you know um, and so David Guetta and uh, a lot of the same remixers um, Calvin Harris people like that yeah so that's kind of still pretty big at places like Club Cafe now um, and at um, Guilt and places like that um, and of course, still amount of certain amount of tribal, I guess, house music, what what Brent likes to call pots and pans music, um, and which I've heard more recently has devolved from not just pots and pans music, but to just pots. So it's not even doesn't even have the variety of pots and pans. It's just pots. Um, but you know, I mean, that could just be sort of us getting older and not sort of recognizing the evolution of dance music. Um, but it's certainly less melodic. Um, than it was, and there I've read I've done, I've done some reading on on how much things like the um, the rise of meth in the gay community in the early two thousands had to do with that sort of, uh, an aggressive sort of um, change in the music style. It became darker and it became less melodic and it became less about unity and it became more about these real isolated like alienated kind of like individuals and music that kind of was the soundtrack to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and in fact, um, the, the, um, I lost my train of thought, um, that alienation um, kind of is what turned me off to dance music for a good chunk of the, of the 2000s. So I could see it coming in the late 90s, I, what I was hearing, what I was getting um, was a lot of Razor and Guido and like a lot of those kind of remixers where I felt like, and Junior Vasquez I think had sort of started this to some degree too. Um, Junior Vasquez had a real tribal heavy kind of um, sound that evolved into other producers into like Victor Calderon and people like that um, who still had a certain amount of melody but um, you'd find a lot of DJs playing like the instrumentals and the dub versions of those records so that they had removed a lot of the melody and it was still really about that kind of like um, non-melodic tribal. In fact, I just read an um, article in, in Gawker talking about this last black party a couple weeks ago and he described the music as four on the floor animosity which I think is a perfect term for, turn of phrase for so, it's, so it sounds like it hasn't changed that much. And I'm not really an authority on um, current dance music because I don't go out as much as I used to um, because I feel like I've done a lot of it. I don't feel like I need to see where everything's been. I know where it kind of is right now. Um, but I also know that as a DJ, I'm not interested in playing that kind of thing. I mean, as a DJ, you can't play... Well, you can, and you can be successful at it, but... Sometimes you don't um, want to play things that don't feel true to yourself to some degree. You know, they're not, it's not, I mean, the whole thing is about taste, you know, with DJs is what their, where does their taste intersect with the taste of the public? Uh, and it becomes like an ongoing kind of conversation between you and the room full of people at the time. And if you can cultivate an audience that um, likes your taste, then you don't really have to resort to some of the, um, things that are big right now um, but it's hard I mean you know I mean it's always right now the explosion of dance music has sort of made it um, such that like there's a new station that 101.7 that used to be um, FNX is now an all dance music station and during their 
prime time hours and their peak hours, they're playing all the Calvin Harris and all the, you know, they're playing all that stuff. Um, so that's what people hear the most. And people have always, to some degree or another, wanted to hear what they know when they go out. I never, I'll never forget reading Andrew Holleran's Dancer from the Dance, and there are several passages where the narrator is talking about um, what it was like at places like 12 West and Flamingo and places like that. I, I, I think that there's a mixture of real places and maybe invented places in the book. I'm not, I can't really remember. Um, and talking about, the narrator talks about how nobody's dancing and then he puts on like a Patty Brooks record and everybody's so relieved because they finally hear something they know. So they, and that he makes a few snide remarks about DJs sort of being snobs um, and, you know, um, not wanting to give people what they want um, to some degree. So that's been a, an ongoing thing since at least the 70s. Um, but people want what they, what they know. So if you don't have an outlet for, like a lot of the things I, I play now and a lot of things that I like now are things that are, um, again, they're more new disco influenced, they're, they're deeper house. This isn't a very big city for new house music in the gay community anymore. There used to be a few scenes like Axis on, not Axis, um, Venus de Milo on Wednesdays was a pretty good house music scene. Um, Michael um, Sheehan, we used to play, also used to play at, um, there's another name too. Michael Sheehan is somebody um, used to play at um, Buddies and at um, Venus de Milo. I haven't seen him in a while, but I used to see him walking around in the South End in the past like five, six years. So he's somebody we might want to consider tracking down and talking to too, because he was here for a lot of it as well. 